we want to evaluate the given double integral over the region r, where r is the region 25x squared plus 4y squared less than or equal to 100. We're going to evaluate this double integral by performing a change of variables, sometimes called a transformation. But before we do this, let's take a closer look at the region r. Region r is defined by the inequality 25x squared plus 4y squared less than or equal to 100. We should recognize this is an ellipse, but to graph the ellipse, we would want the right side to be equal to 1, so let's divide everything by 100. Simplifying, we'd have x squared divided by 4 plus y squared divided by 25 less than or equal to 1. So we have an ellipse centered at the origin, where the vertical axis is the major axis and is a length of 10 units, as we see here, and the minor axis has a length of four units, as we see here. So the area of this ellipse is the region R, and now we're going to perform a change of variables. To simplify the region of integration, we're going to simplify this to a region of integration that's a circle, and we can do this by performing a change of variables. Notice how if we let x equal two u and y equal five v, if we perform substitution into the inequality, we would have 2u squared divided by 4 plus 5v squared divided by 25 less than or equal to 1. And this simplifies very nicely to u squared plus v squared less than or equal to 1, where this region would be a circle centered at the origin with the radius of 1, which I've already graphed here. So this is going to be the region S in the uv plane. Now that we know the region of integration for the uv plane, we still have to write f of x comma y as a function of u and v, and then we're performing a change of variables. We're going to have this extra factor in the integrand function, which is called the Jacobian, and then we have du dv. So notice how differential a in the xy plane is equal to this extra factor, the Jacobian, du dv in the uv plane. So now let's work on determining f of u comma v, or writing the integrand function as a function of u and v. But before we do that, now we know the region S in the uv plane is bounded by u squared plus v squared less than or equal to one when we use the transformation or change of variables of x equals two u and y equals five v. Notice how f of x comma y, the integrand function here, is equal to x squared, which means f of u comma v would be equal to 2u squared, since x is equal to 2u. So f of u comma v is equal to 4u squared. Next, we need to find the Jacobian. And for review, remember the Jacobian is equal to the value of this 2 by 2 determinant. So to find the elements in the determinant, we need to find the partial derivatives using our equations for x and y. So the partial of x with respect to u is going to be two. The partial of x with respect to v would be zero. The partial of y with respect to u would be zero. And the partial of y with respect to v would be five. So the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v is equal to the two by two determinant, where the first row would have elements two and zero. The second row would have elements zero and five. So the value of this two by two determinant is equal to this product minus this product, which should be 10 minus zero, which equals 10. So going back to our previous slide, notice how we use the absolute value of the Jacobian. So the absolute value of the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v would be equal to the absolute value of 10, which equals 10. So now we have all the pieces we need in order to write the given double integral in terms of u and v. The given double integral is going to be equal to the double integral over the region s of f of u comma v, which is 4u squared, times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is 10, and then we have the u, dv. So now we need to find the limits of integration for u and v, 
But notice in this case, because the region of integration is a circle, it's actually going to be easier to evaluate this if we perform another change of variables and write this double integral in polar form. So let's work on doing this. Let's rewrite this as the double integral over the region S of, this would be 40U squared, and we have the U dV. On the UV plane, this would be the U axis, and this would be the V axis. So on the UV plane, we can say that U is equal to R cosine theta, and V is equal to R sine theta. So now writing the double integral using polar coordinates, we're going to have the double integral. 40U squared is going to be 40, and then U is equal to R cosine theta, so U squared would be R squared cosine squared theta. And then remember, when using polar coordinates, we'll have an extra factor of r, which would actually be the Jacobian, and then we have dr d theta. So now we need to find the limits of integration for r and theta using this region of integration. The limits of integration for r would be from 0 to 1. The limits of integration for theta would be from 0 to 2 pi all the way around the circle. Let's go ahead and simplify the integrand function. We have the double integral over the region S using polar coordinates, we'd have 40 r cubed cosine squared theta dr d theta. Now let's evaluate this double integral on the next slide. And now we integrate with respect to r, treating theta as a constant. So the antiderivative is going to be 40 cosine squared times r to the fourth divided by four, which would be 10 r to the fourth cosine squared theta. Now you define big F of B minus big F of A by performing substitution for R. So when R is equal to one, we're going to have 10 cosine squared theta. When R is equal to zero, we just have zero. So the new integrand function is 10 cosine squared theta. Before we integrate with respect to theta though, we'll have to use a power reducing formula for cosine squared theta. Remember cosine squared theta is equal to one half times one plus cosine two theta. Let's perform this substitution for cosine squared theta. Well, 10 times one half is five. This is going to be five times the quantity one plus cosine two theta. Let's go ahead and distribute. So we have five plus five cosine two theta. Integrating the respect to theta, the antiderivative of five is going to be five theta. Now we integrate five cosine two theta, we do have to perform u substitution where u equals two theta, du equals two d theta. So dividing both sides by two, Notice how one half du is equal to d theta. So we're going to have an extra factor of one half when integrating five cosine two theta. So the antiderivative is going to be plus five halves sine two theta. Again, that's because we can think of this as five times one half cosine u du. Now evaluating here, when theta is equal to two pi, we'll have five times two pi plus five halves times the sine of two times two pi, that's four pi. And when theta is equal to zero, we have five times zero plus five half times sine zero. Well, sine four pi is zero, five times zero is zero, and sine zero is zero. So this simplifies nicely to 10 pi which would be approximately 31.1416. I hope you found this helpful.